we check out the sun dolphin, which isn't looking too hot out here. Wait, this thing is warped. The whole thing is warped. It is warped, but like, where is the drainage from here back there? Ask him what the warped price dude, is. This thing, like, oh, dude, it's warped. Look at the, the bunk underneath. Oh, man. <laughs> dude, the whole boat is like imploding. That's really sad. That's why I don't approve of kayaks. The audience has for a while asked me to do a plastic boat conversion. And my response to them has always been, but why? But because of my patrons and my channel members, the people who not only like this channel, but fund this channel, anybody who's bought through our store, all wanna see a plastic boat conversion. So even though I don't wanna do it, you guys are pretty awesome. And so I'm going to do it. Note that this is being done for you, not me. The fan base is the boss of this channel. The fan base dictates what projects get pushed through. And so this project is getting pushed through. I was stuck on it for a while though, I'll be honest. But my son wanted to take this thing out. And while he was on it, I saw what it could become. I saw how it floated, how he used it, what the flaws were and what things we could improve. And now I think we have a clear direction on what way we need to take. So stay tuned, because here it goes. Quick, simple, we're not gonna chop the body up. I thought about doing that. I think that's gonna be a stupid move. So we will just convert right to the frame. We can add a nice little core section and we can even add a section where we might be able to have some rod locker utilization. Cause they do fit like right here. There's a high enough deal. Sectioned off areas, we can have quite a few compartments. And we also have some scrap we can throw in here. Maybe a lot of scrap. So we're gonna use one half inch five ply sheet of ferrated plywood from the hardware store. If you can find marine grade plywood, good for you. Otherwise, this will do. Trace the bottom of the sheet against the hull and then make your cuts. We're gonna be gritting this entire thing and we're gonna be installing flush mount dry hatches. These are our ultralight dry hatches, which are a lot lighter and also a lot cheaper than the standard robust hatches we use for bigger boats. This is the layout for the hatches we have for scrap. Long one, shorts, but fat, pedestal, smaller pig. All pretty symmetrically sound. If I had it my way, I would have two of these and two of those, and they would make pretty good, but really, can they do with what we have? Is it gonna work? And we, we tried to keep the deck, so you have about a four foot space, roughly about four feet. So from deck to area, right at 48 inches. Dang. 48 and a quarter, whatever. And then it'll drop down. You'll have a little cockpit area, but obviously the area for the battery and the other trolling motor, if you're going to use it. Definitely some sort of rudder. Like if you're not going to use a rear trolling motor, you need some sort of rudder system. This thing would just drift everywhere. Now that the grid is drawn, we make our cuts on the inside of the ledge. So these hatches have a hole size and then inch and a half flange that drop out. So we're cutting out the hole size and leaving an inch and a half flange that we are routing out 1 16th inch down because these hatches are that thickness. So they should ideally sit flush with the rest of the deck. And this concept will carry over to anybody who is using wood for a deck that just wants a really nice quality hatch that is not gonna blow up in a year. It's working out like I thought it was. 1 16th inch, router in, half inch uh, router bit, whatever router you have, this in, this in case is the one I have. I also have a Dewalt, this one's a little bit stronger, more steady on wood. Not so much on turf. Yeah, they kind of fit right in there. I kind of rushed this and did not get the lines perfect like I could have. And I did that because we're gonna be epoxy coating and filling this all in. And when I do that, the epoxy is gonna naturally sit in any sort of off divot that we have. And it's all gonna just self level. So I'm super unconcerned about the terrible route lines. These meshed up pretty good. We do have to route this down. I almost cut this out, which was stupid. That would have ruined the whole thing. But we are gonna go and hole saw this next and then router the rest of it to recess whatever the depth of the uh of the pedestal is so it can sit right there and then we'll have a nice little four foot deck with the other four foot of utilized cockpit space for whatever cut the sub floor out until this thing was on top of that boat because i feared that it would break in half as thin as those sections are for the side hatches go ahead and make your last minute tweaks before you go ahead and start to secure these to the deck Normally we'd have to use rivets and countersink that, but because this is wood, we can just use standard little stainless screws and countersink those. Sit them in flush with the hatches and do that for all of them. Quite an easy process. So this piece is what we're doing to bracket. It's just like this, this tube. We're gonna put one on each end, down through here into the hole. And I don't think we'll need to make another one. We're gonna end up making an end cap, like a boat that has like a bow plate and end caps. We're gonna be making those for there. I stewed on it. I was wondering how I was gonna do it. 
and really there is no other way but to make our own custom end caps probably out of aluminum could do it out of wood too but makes them for there and then back here where we had to cut to level it out because the transom started hiding up so we'll do it back here so we'll do it up here end caps on each front and then back here definitely the only way we're going to make this good is if we cap it off we won't cap it off until after we turf it though we'll make the custom caps after that Everything is coming together surprisingly well. Not a whole lot of fails. A few things we gotta minorly tweak. Everything is actually dropping in quite well. It's nice because in regular boats like this, we have a million things that go wrong when they should not go wrong, but they do and it takes forever. But this one, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install this under here to give this a nice brace like we did up there. And between these braces, which we're gonna have to be doing a few rivets down to grab the bar in here to strengthen that. Aside from that, we should be pretty good. I get a lot of questions about whether or not EVA foam will stick to wood, and the answer is yes, if you prep it correctly. So not only are we gonna give it a superior waterproofing on the edges and the top and eventually the bottom, because I forgot to do the bottom, I had to flip this over on sawhorses and do it. It was, I'm just spare you from watching that. But what we're doing is we're using West Systems 105 Marine Epoxy, which is really good at penetrating into wood and waterproofing it. You might have to do a few layers though. I had to do two and then three on some of the spots where it was really stubborn and it soaked in a lot. And I tried to use the tape to keep it from getting on the freshly painted hatches. They, they took those compartments apart and painted them black to give it a nice accent underneath the turf we're gonna use, but it was whatever it was. I had to go over there and hit it with an orbital sander to find any high and low spots. And then once you get those, those low spots exposed, I just went in there with some uh, West System 610 marine epoxy. It's thickened and it will level out and do its thing and cure. And then after that's all done, we can go ahead and hit it again with an orbital sander to see if there's any more low spots. And if it's good, we'll go ahead and put it out there. We will repaint the hatches, give it one nice real thin coat over the top to make sure they look their best. And then we will continue with the EVA foam process. This is Orthodex Supreme EVA Foam from our website, tvnation.net. It is my favorite stuff to use. They come in both lined, pre-routed, and non-routed turf like this. We specifically got it non-routed because we're gonna do our own custom route job, just like we did in our Yak Killer with the same exact color. This is Mocha Black. The sheets are a little smaller than I would prefer personally, so we're gonna have to use two sheets to make this deck up. There's a way to seam them up if you overlap them, over each end and then you make one cut then when you go to seam them up they will fit pretty much symmetrically now getting the grain to seam up with each other that's a different story entirely but as far as getting it to work the way it's working now it's fine then you just find the lines in the indent and you cut the hatches out i laid those hatches in there symmetrically so when you did lay over the turf it would lay over the hatches and the turf would sit on the hatches with the grooves exactly how it was supposed to sit then we cut them out and then after that you just take a contouring bit and then you route out the edges. Make sure that it's uh, small enough to where it doesn't start cutting into, you know, the, the hatch grooves itself, because it will do that if you have too far out a bit that contours. And this one actually I think is pushing it. I should have went one size smaller, at least for this. The hatches naturally have a rounded edge, so you can use a sharper, like a, a farther out bit, but on here, you don't want to do that. I'm also burning the edges for any little frays or rubber burnouts, like you can go ahead and melt it off with a very low temp soldering iron. Notice low temp. That Milwaukee cordless soldering iron is like the perfect temperature. I've used corded soldering irons, burn right through the turf. They take a lot more control. And then for the same process that we routed the inside of the hatch frame, we're gonna go do that again here. We're also gonna be doing probably some more intricate lines inside on in the next video, but that's gonna have to wait because right now we're trying to scheme on what we're gonna do. I kind of want to go all out on this one just because this is a fun for you guys project and uh, you know on the other turf jobs I'll be honest little little nerve-wracking but I think I'm com comfortable enough with the material and right now because this is a fan funded project if I don't try and show you guys what I can do here then I mean I don't know why I'm even doing this anymore I could die tomorrow in a car crash then 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 what 
Might as well just put it all out and see what we can do. And if we mess up this really expensive piece of turf, then we're just gonna have to go buy a new one. But I think we got this. I do. Plus, you know, I haven't drawn in a while. I used to draw all the time, and then, well, you become an adult, and that stuff kind of goes away. But, man, doing this just made me remember how much I actually like to draw. And when you carve it in here, I mean, as long as you have a steady hand, if you can draw or if you can weld, you can do this. I'm a little rusty, so I had to kind of look up some images and get a few ideas in my head to put it forth. I put my own little spin on them. But yeah, before I used to just be able to think up stuff in my head and put it on there without having to do all that. So I'm kind of getting old. I can feel it. One of our people on Facebook tipped me off that if you use little stone Dremel bits that they would work really well and burn into the turf and then not leave any line frays. So I did try that. What happened was the stone bit actually melted and there were more line frays. So I guess this turf is just unique. All turf is not created equal. What I did find out though is I had an assortment of Dremel bits in different things and I used these. I don't know if they're diamond coated. They're kind of like weird, but they were like precision fine-tuned and they got right in there and it was very easy to trace it out once you found the right bit the fatter the bit the flatter the bit the harder it is to control but you can also range to different depths you can kind of give it a ghost look like we did with the tv nation logo where it's not fully down into the black and so giving it at certain depths really kind of gives it a nice unique look like this where we start to give the water splash it's a unique kind of shine and you can do even more of this i kind of leveled up a few times just doing that all like inside the job one job so it's kind of how it works. You have to fail by trial and error and then eventually to success and then eventually to advancement. So among the many things, what we did prove here today is that you really don't need a CNC router to get results like this. You can route your own custom turf job and it can be yours and it can be done on wood. It can be done on anything. We have stock colors on our site. This is one of my favorite stock colors, but we can get you pretty much any color. I think the ore that egg makes, they, they make this gray and green underneath. They make a lot of two, two tone. I think three tone turf is extremely expensive, but they will make it. So if you guys want custom orders at support at tbnation.net, possibly talk about it. We had to splice a lot of foam together. That kind of stunk like right here. So we'll be doing something a little bit. Doesn't mesh up quite as nice as say the camo turf where if you cut it, I mean the lines meshed up in some spots it actually shrunk. Really not very happy about that. Those are fails. That end's actually coming up. like. I don't know what I have to do without that. I'll have to fix that. You know, contact cement will fix it, but we're going to be doing something unique around the edges to kind of make that all blend in. And it's all possible. It's not a big, big deal. In sections, as long as you cut around the teak and you make the teak line mesh in, you can replace entire sections like this, which is why the section is out, because the section was meshed inside here, because the, the roll wasn't quite wide enough to cover the whole board. So we had to add end sections. That's what it is. That took a long time. I still have to kind of continue something. I can't just leave it like that, but I'm only gonna do one side like that. And over there, we'll have a bump board routed in and we might just do our traditional framing, you know, little little line frame of the doors, drill the holes for the boat latches and then get that going and then figure out whatever, whether their external kind of design that we're gonna do, it'll be pretty intricate. It'll be the, the best one. I mean, if we don't start going all out and doing what we think we're capable of and taking risks, yeah, this turf is expensive. Bigger thing is this gap here leading up to the support beam. We're gonna make a cap that comes all the way out here and caps it, kind of runs like that. So it'll be an end cap slash bumper cap slash whatever. So we still have yet to do that. We still have to do the side panels and the under supports. Now that lip right here, that those tracks, that, that, that those seat tracked into, that those seats set in there, I'm gonna end up cutting, what is it, like three, four inches? That little three, four inch gap of this, I'm gonna set it right in there, groove it with angle or with brackets from wherever you get it. We have an overhang, that way we got a clean line cut on the turf, but we're gonna put that there and that's gonna support the, the bulk majority of it down, all the way down. We'll be cutting and sliding that in sections and then just tying something like this 
which I like to use possibly aluminum or thinner plywood just to save weight because this is a small boat. We're trying to only add about like, you know, between 50 and 60 pounds to the, the whole boat. The, the capacity for the boat is 392 pounds or something. 375 pounds. So we're trying to use less than 75 pounds. So 300 pounds capacity. My son is like a whopping 120 soaking wet, uh, plus a lead acid battery, plus two trolling motors and some gear. Uh, we'll be well under the weight capacity. Um, this really is a one man monster with a boat this small. It should in theory do really well in theory i know we don't know but when it comes to stuff like this i'm right a lot so let's hope i'm right again all right and all right part two of this project we'll be doing all the things we just talked about only they'll be done check us out on patreon.com slash tb nation or becoming a channel member here on youtube to get access to exclusive perks and videos never released to the youtube public along with many other things also check out our slay nation tournament trail sponsored by tb nation their tournament is well underway but i would stay close and monitor it and get ready for next year Check us out, tbnationhp.com for that tournament. See you guys later. Peace.